Welcome to Reader's Theater, The Wise in the House, by me, Katherine Zorb. And this is licensed under Creative Commons Licensure by NC, which means you must attribute it to me, Katherine, and use it for non-commercial purposes if you choose to use this later. So here's what we're going to talk about today. What is Reader's Theater? A Reader's Theater is a dramatic performance of a group of students. It's like a simple play, a play that requires no costumes, no sets, no props, and no memorized lines. The students will each have an assigned role, and their job is to bring a reading alive by phrasing, timing, pauses, and expressive reading. For example, what sounds better? To be or not to be, that is the question. Or to be or not to be, that is the question. The first example is flat and dull, and the second example has more life to it. The benefits of getting a student to do a reader's theater are many. First off, it provides a lot of reading practice. If a student is reading a book on their own, they might read it once or twice. But to read for a reader's theater, they have to practice it over and over. While the students do not memorize the reading, they do spend a lot of time reading it again and again. Reading over and over and over helps them a lot because practice makes perfect. It helps students with voice projection, pronunciation, inflection, and fluency. It helps students with their comprehension. They have to understand the reading to know how to use those projection and pronunciation and inflections. Since Reader Theater is done in groups, it gives students a, a chance to practice teamwork. It helps them learn to encourage others, assist others, and be patient with others. It's also great for teachers. A reader theater can be done in just about any subject, and it's fantastic for differentiation. Here are some fancy facts. Reader theaters allows for multiple ways of understanding, kinesthetic, linguistic, and interpersonal. So they learn with their bodies by doing the inflections, by doing gestures, they learn with the language, and they learn by working in the team. Samuels and Dahl found that reading things over and over and over and over emphasizes fluency and comprehension. So what now if you have a reader theater you'd like to do? How do you do that? It's three simple steps. First you select a script. The students or the teacher select a script for the reader's theater. Teachers should consider the students' needs, like what reading level they're at, the length of the reading, and how the script can fit into what's going on in the classroom. These scripts can be pre-written, or they can even be student work. Once the script is selected, either assign parts or have the students decide who gets what part. Make sure each student has their own copy of the reading. Next comes the meat of it. They rehearse. This is where the students get into groups and practice, practice, practice. You encourage the students to help each other be expressive, help with fluency, and help with inflection. The students should be able to do this with minimal interference from the teacher. Help them help each other. You're more of a coach in this situation. Step back and watch what your students can do. Once they practice, 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 then they go to the stage and share with the rest of the class. It's time to perform. Each group will get up in front of the class and perform their piece. Remember, nothing's really needed other than the student and the reading. There's no props, no sets, no costumes, no lighting, and no makeup required. So what's next in this class? This week you're going to plan for a reader theater of your own. I've assigned you to groups, which you'll see in the module, and you'll each have your own message board. You'll prepare for a reader's theater using the directions I put in that message board. We're going to have so much fun. Thank you so much for watching, and if you do want to use this for um, a presentation later, here's a Creative Commons citation suggestion. Remember, when you use Creative Commons, you need to have the title, the author, any other additional information, and the license. And this is licensed under a CC by non-commercial, which means you're welcome to use it, remix it, change it, as long as it's not for commercial purposes, including professional conferences. Thank you so much.